This is group four with our new media and communication community project. Created by Caleb Alva, Ruby Garcia, Eliana Martinez, and Vanessa Moreno. Today we will be discussing and analyzing Twitch TV. So what is Twitch TV? For those of you who are unaware of what it is, it's quite similar to the application YouTube. In comparison to YouTube, Twitch is a website where users are able to generate content and upload it online for an intended audience. The site sells ads to generate revenue and the ads are based on user activity through a number of views and subscribers. In contrast with YouTube, Twitch is funded by the community itself and is most known for being a social gaming community. It provides live streams of gameplay from a variety of games. Users are able to create a Twitch account to either follow or generate specific content. If a certain individual generates authentic or popular content, then there is crowdfunding for the continuation of the content produced by the user. Now that we've introduced what Twitch is, we will shift gears onto what a virtual community is. According to Howard Rheingold from the virtual community, virtual communities are social aggregations that emerge from the net when enough people carry on those public discussions long enough, with sufficient human feeling to form webs of personal relationships in cyberspace. As we've noticed on the slide, these are the questions we as a group decided we wanted to answer in regards to Twitch. Through extensive research, we will discuss and analyze our findings throughout our presentation. First, we will discuss the communication aspect of our virtual community. Based on observation and interviewing, much of Twitch's chat rooms are self-policed. This means there are moderators that observe and step in when something inappropriate is said, or a random troll comes along and attempts to disrupt the stream, chat room conversations, or even to insult the streamer. One particular user, Rogue underscore 13, said moderators in the Geek and Sundry Twitch channel take their jobs very seriously. He said the moderators and original viewers are who set the tone for chat behavior. Streamers also set the tone when any trolling is reached to them, but most trolls never get seen by the host. Overall, Rogue underscore 13 said the moderators are very protective of the streamers. This shows that there's never really an issue with having to deal with outsiders. In order to participate in the chat room, you must create a Twitch account. If you have an account, you are also able to privately speak to users, which are specifically called whispers. I was able to use both forms of communication to speak with users within this community. Geek and Sundry is one of various communities that not only get along well, but also look out for each other when it comes to the well-beloved trolls. Barn raising was briefly discussed in class. A community is able to accomplish more with common goals in mind. Twitch has utilized this concept. Streamers are able to produce content because the community contributes financially for them to do so. This content may not otherwise exist, or if it did, it wouldn't be to the same level of production. Both the streamers and viewers benefit from barn raising. The streamers are paid to produce their content, so this provides a potential career or subsidize their income, while the viewers get to see content from streamers that they enjoy contributing to. As with all things in life, there is always pressure to maintain a certain image or title that an individual has. This falls into the case of the streamers on Twitch. Because Twitch depends so heavily on crowdfunding and barn raising, fundraising and donations are constantly a topic involved in the live streams. However, how far is too far? According to wish.tv.com, in February of this year, a Twitch streamer named Brian Bignolt passed away unexpectedly during a 24-hour stream he was holding for the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Though his viewers saw how tired he was and tried to convince him to take a break, Bignolt refused. More on this story can be found in the link below in the description of this YouTube video in case you're interested on learning more about this. Another example of this is from a Twitch streamer named Erica Ishii, 
who created a fundraiser to sponsor the American Civil Liberties Union, better known as ACLU. Based from Rogue underscore 13's interview, he said as she promised to eat a salted tarantula one of the chat members wanted to send in, as well as other creatures if she reached her goal of $10,000. Within 24 hours of her stream, she reached her goal and ate the spider, along with chocolate-covered crickets and scorpions. Twitch has a very strict EULA, or User License Agreement, and Code of Conduct. Violations of this agreement can lead to an account ban. For example, instances of nudity that have occurred have resulted in permanent bans. Streamers have certain guidelines they are supposed to abide by. While foul language is less moderated, Twitch aims to provide a family atmosphere. This also raises the questions of what content Twitch would not allow. If there was a following of a particular hate group, would they be able to foster a community of like-minded individuals? Or would Twitch simply ban this content immediately? After browsing through various channels on Twitch, I decided to observe a Dungeons & Dragons group on Geek & Sundry called Critical Role. Dungeons & Dragons has been a huge hobby of mine for years now, and conveniently, their episodes release every Thursday night at 7, so it made it easy for me to tune in each week as my schedule permitted. Every episode builds on a previous episode, and the aim of the community is to really immerse people in the storyline. So I decided to see how much could I immerse myself in this online community. After creating an account and observing for a little while, I decided to interview several people. The first person that I interviewed went by the username Linkovich. Linkovich has been on Twitch for about two years and follows Critical Role as well as another streamer that streams Heroes of the Storm. When asked if, in fact, Linkovich thought this was an online community, he agreed wholeheartedly that it was. Ha not having access to a physical Dungeons and Dragons group, the online episodes, as well as trading storylines and ideas, created that community that he did not have with a local gaming group. Linkovich also said he has donated to the Critical Role channel to receive exclusive content, newsletters, and has even been sent some prizes for participation. Another person I interviewed went by the name of Peyton. Peyton had very similar ideas about Critical Role as Linkovich. He too agreed that it is an online community and he is able to actively immerse himself in the storyline that's going on as well as talking to other members of the community. Ironically, Critical Role claims to be a very open community where people can exchange ideas, but there was a real hesitant hesitation for the interviews. People did not want to easily, or weren't easily self-disclosing, so I found this to be an issue. I had to keep questions strictly about Twitch or D&D or Critical Role. When I wondered about a person's first name or location, they seemed very hesitant to exchange this information. I find this interesting since it is a community. If I were to go to a local gaming group and play Dungeons and Dragons, I would have no problem sharing my first name, maybe where I go to school. So I'm unsure why that barrier was there. Granted, I did interview only a few people and this could have been the few introverts online that were unwilling to share any information. To conclude our presentation, we will now answer our final question, what defines Twitch as a community? Based from our discussions in class, interviews with users, and our own personal observations within Twitch TV, there's a shared closeness among viewers and streamers alike. Users come together and not only participate in streamers' content, but are quite attentive of it. Every person that was interviewed throughout this project agreed that they felt Twitch was a community because it's a place that understands them or appeals to them. 
Various people from all over the world are able to communicate and discuss various topics they may share in common with others. After observing the commitment and interaction between members and the website itself, it is safe to say that Twitch.tv is indeed a virtual community.